It's always encouraging to see that the European capitals of urban design and livability weren't always like that. The Dutch didn't always have their bike paths, and it was just a few years ago that Paris used its riverbanks as highways. Some cities do start with more advantages when it comes to density or mixed-use neighborhoods, but at the same time, every city has a lot of latitude about what direction it wants to go. On this channel, we talk a lot about the urbanism of Montreal, but Montreal wasn't always like this, either. Living here has been an exciting experience of seeing the city actively get better, and learning that features we took for granted didn't even exist until surprisingly recently. In this video, we're going to showcase nine urbanist transformations in Montreal that we haven't really featured on this channel yet. This intersection where Park Avenue meets downtown still isn't the nicest place in the city, but it used to be so much worse. For almost 50 years, it was an awkwardly shaped highway interchange that forced pedestrians to cross using confusing and dangerous underground pathways. It probably didn't even help traffic flow very much, since this is an urban environment, with traffic lights not too far away on all sides. The current non-crazy layout was completed in 2006 or 2007, and it made the intersection look more like it did back in the 1950s. Today it's also an important cycling connection to downtown and McGill University. This cross street, Pine Avenue, or Avenue des Pins, has been getting much better for cyclists, too. Five years ago, it got some underwhelming painted lanes, but over the past year it's been getting upgraded to high-quality protected lanes. Back in 2009, Laurier Avenue East was a wide road with up to four lanes for driving and parking cars, lined with only modest sidewalks. Over a few iterations, the street became one way for cars with more limited parking and two painted bike lanes, which work well enough on the relatively low traffic street, seeing 650,000 cyclists a year. Special attention in the form of really wide sidewalks was given to the metro station and elementary school. The space at the metro station gets used for events like a farmer's market, and we often see kids and parents biking to school here, although it's under renovation right now. The intermediary step using only paint to reduce space for cars was an improvement, but the full redesign with trees looks so much nicer. The rest of the street didn't get quite the same treatment, but it does have bike lanes, less traffic, more room for businesses, and the elimination of this road into Laurier Park. Other parks in Montreal have also had their roads removed or converted. Baldwin Park has two examples. This pathway was converted from a road with parking around 2009, and this other pathway got the same treatment 10 years later. This park also saw an iterative transformation of the road going through it. In 2016, it was a standard road with parking. In 2018, the sidewalks were extended to take over the parking spots. In 2019, the road was blocked off with planters and signs. And then 2020 saw the street actually incorporated into the park, with a nice bike path going through. Other parks around the city are also currently in the process of reclaiming roads. Park La Fontaine is in the midst of a 10-year phase-out of the roads going through it. And just within the past few weeks, Duluth Avenue in this park was closed to cars using bollards, with a long-term goal of reincorporating it into the park. What about access for utility vehicles, you might wonder? That's actually not a problem at all. City vehicles use pedestrian pathways for maintenance and landscaping all the time. On top of the Laurier project, many other schools have also had road improvements. This really nice pedestrian plaza near a school used to be a through road just a few years ago. This modal filter, blocking cars but allowing cyclists and pedestrians, was added behind that school sometime after 2011. Universities have been working on more people-friendly designs too. McGill pedestrianized McTavish Street over a few iterative steps since 2010. The engineering school, ETS, pedestrianized this street on its campus, and St. Denis Street near the University of Quebec at Montreal was redone with wider sidewalks and a concrete paver surface. Unfortunately, there's still a long way to go, especially on safety for grade schools. A seven-year-old was killed recently near her school by a driver who fled the scene. The city has promised wider sidewalks and traffic diversion near schools, but in the meantime, drivers were recorded making almost one illegal turn per minute at the intersection where she was killed. This urban boulevard wasn't always here. For half a century, commuters from the South Shore passed through here on an elevated urban highway called the Bonaventure Expressway. In 2016, demolition started to reconfigure the space into the current at-grade boulevard, featuring art, a playground, an outdoor gym, 
and vantage points to watch trains coming in to Montreal's Central Station. The Linear Park actually gets more foot traffic than we might expect, given the unfortunate traffic noise. But the location is right between downtown, Old Montreal, and the revitalized Griffintown neighborhood. Villeray Street, which connects Montreal's busiest bike corridor to one of its most lively parks through a dense neighborhood, was turned into a Vélo Rue, or Bike Street, in 2021. Cars were reduced to one direction with a modal filter near the park, meaning that cars can access this street if they live there or want to go to a shop, but it's no longer an appealing route for through traffic. Another recently installed bike road on Island Street connects cyclists from the Lachine Canal through Point St. Charles, with seating and other amenities like a park. No project is ever going to have unanimous support, but for whatever reason, opposing neighbors here felt energized enough to print signs. And finally, this street was reconfigured in 2021 to be something of a bike street with a really unique twist. Most of the road was turned into a functional community garden with greenhouses. Kale Bonnie Day! There are too many examples to even try to start naming them all, but Montreal has made heavy use of curb extensions, near intersections, and other crosswalks. Narrowing the road slows down drivers, and getting rid of parking at key crossing points makes pedestrians more visible. A few areas even have these reflectors, making the narrowing of the road and presence of pedestrians hopefully even more visibly obvious to drivers. Rosemont La Petite Patrie, one of the city's most urbanist boroughs, recently announced a plan to charge heavier vehicles more for street parking permits. The rates are still surprisingly low. A year of street parking shouldn't cost as much as a month of public transit, but it's a step in the right direction in encouraging smaller, safer, and more efficient vehicles. Montreal's extremely popular Bixie Bike Share Network has historically only been available for seven months of the year, owing to the city's harsh winter. But biking in the winter has been getting more and more popular, as the city's gotten better at clearing the bike lanes, and it was only a matter of time before Bixie expanded into the winter too. This coming winter, the city is doing a pilot project, prioritizing stations near the express bike routes. The Bixies will be equipped with studded tires, but only regular non-electric bikes will be available, because batteries don't do so well, left out in the cold. To be clear, harsh winter weather doesn't actually last for a full five-month span in Montreal, but that's about the length of time where it can snow. And one of the challenges they were working to address was the stations getting in the way of snow clearing. We don't want to give the impression that Montreal is an urbanist paradise or anything, at least not as a whole. But the city does have some really good pockets, as well as a level of momentum and popular support for improving itself that feels genuinely unique among North American cities we've lived in or visited. Housing affordability is a major concern, as it is elsewhere, but in other respects, Montreal is a better place to live today than it was 10 years ago, and it'll be better 10 years in the future. There's actually so much to talk about that we might do another one of these in the future, so let us know your favorite urban improvements in Montreal. Finally, because we relied on Google Street View to get information on some of the old configurations, some of the dates for when the changes were made might be off by a year. Thanks for watching through to the end of the video. Don't forget to bike and subscribe, and a special thanks to our supporters on Patreon.